Hello friends, welcome back to my art studio. Thanks for joining me. I'm Miss Hana and I'm here to um, share with you the April program for the Dubuque Museum of Arts Young at Art program. Uh, this is going to be our last program this spring, our last program for the school year. I'm going to take a break in May and then we will be back in June for a summer program. So I'm going to come up with some fresh new ideas and we'll see what kind of format we come up with um, for the summertime. So you remember that we have been doing picture books and all of them so far that we've talked about have been uh, called the award winners, right? With the really amazing artwork. And I wanted to share a book with you for the last program for this spring that is not actually a Caldecott Award winner. However, the artist and the author of this book uh, won the Caldecott Award for art for a different book that she wrote. And it was the book that we talked about back in October. Do you guys remember when we read Oxcart Man? Well, this book is illustrated and written by that same artist, Barbara Cooney. So this book, Miss Rumphius, this is a winner of the National Book Award, but not a winner of the Caldecott. But I just love her illustrations. I love her style. And I really love this story about springtime and making beauty when you go through your life and your adventures. Okay, so I'm going to read this and then we're going to do an art, pro uh, art project that is inspired by the illustrations in this book. So this is Miss Rumphius, Story and Pictures by Barbara Cooney. Oh, I have to show you the title page. Look at those. Look at those flowers. Can you guess what the story is going to be about? These flowers right here. The loop and lady lives in a small house overlooking the sea. In between the rocks around her house grow blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. The loop and lady is little and old, but she has not always been that way, I know. She is my great aunt, and she told me so. Once upon a time, she was a little girl named Alice, who lived in a city by the sea. From the front stoop, she could see the wharves and the bristling masts of tall ships. Many years ago, her grandfather had come to America on a large sailing ship. Here she is in her home, looking out at the harbor. Now her grandfather worked in the shop at the bottom of the house making figureheads for the prows of ships and carving Indians out of wood to put in front of cigar stores. For Alice's grandfather was an artist. He painted pictures too of sailing ships and places across the sea. When he was very busy, Alice helped him put in the skies. Here she is in his workshop art studio. You see that? And there's Alice helping him paint. In the evening, Alice sat on her grandfather's knee and listened to his stories of far away places. When he had finished, Alice would say, when I grow up, I too will go to far away places. And when I grow old, I too will live beside the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, said her grandfather, but there is a third thing you must do. What is that? asked Alice. You must do something to make the world more beautiful, said her grandfather. All right said Alice, but she did not know what that could be. In the meantime, Alice got up and washed her face and ate porridge for breakfast. She went to school and came home and did her homework. And pretty soon, she was grown up. Here's Alice, sitting with her grandfather. Hopefully you can see that with the glare. I can never tell exactly what I'm showing you. Then my great aunt Alice set out to do the three things she had told her grandfather she was going to do. She left home and went to live in another city far from the sea and the salt air. There she worked in the library, dusting books and keeping them from getting mixed up and helping people find the ones they wanted. Some of the books told her about faraway places. 
People called her Miss Rumphius now. And here she is. I'm going to peek, make sure you can see. Here she is working at the library. Can you see her? Sometimes she went to the conservatory in the middle of the park. When she stepped inside on a wintry day, the warm, moist air wrapped itself around her and the sweet smell of jasmine filled her nose. This is almost like a tropical isle, said Miss Rumphius, but not, not quite. Do you guys know what a conservatory is? It's like a really big greenhouse. There's a tiny picture of one here. Can you see that? See that little greenhouse? Well, actually, that really big greenhouse. And here she is, smelling all the growing plants and flowers and blossoms here in this greenhouse in the middle of winter. It sounds pretty lovely, huh? Oh, I skipped a page. So Miss Rumphius went to a real tropical island where people kept cockatoos and monkeys as pets. She walked on long beaches, picking up beautiful shells. One day she met the Baba Raja, king of a fishing village. You must be tired, he said. Come into my house and rest. So Miss Rumphius went in and met the Baba Raja's wife. The Baba Raba, Raja himself fetched a green coconut and cut a slice off the top so that Miss Rumphius could drink the coconut water inside. Before she left, the Baba Raja gave her a beautiful mother of pearl shell on which she had painted a bird of paradise and the words, you will always remain in my heart. You will always remain in mine too, said Miss Rumphius. And here she is exploring the world. Can you see? learning about people who lived in other places than her New England town. My great, my great aunt, Miss Alice Rumphius, climbed tall mountains where the snow never melted. She went through jungles and across deserts. She saw lions playing and kangaroos jumping, and everywhere she made friends she would never forget. Finally, she came back to the land of the lotus eaters, and there, getting off a camel, she hurt her back. <sighs> what a foolish thing to do, said Miss Rumphius. Well, I have certainly seen faraway places. Maybe it is time to find my place by the sea. And it was, and she did. Here she is. You see the buildings there? And the colors, and the clothing. It's all very different, isn't it? Do you guys remember when we first met her growing up in her New England town. Let me see if I can mark both pages. This is where she grows up. That's really different, isn't it? But those people, those people all really the same? Everyone, everywhere together? From the porch of her new house, Miss Rumphius watched the sun come up. She watched it cross the heavens and sparkle on the water, and she saw it set in glory in the evening. She started a little garden among the rocks that surrounded her house, and she planted a few flower seeds in the stony ground. Miss Rumphius was almost perfectly happy. But there is still one more thing I have to do, she said. I have to do something to make the world more beautiful. But what? The world is already pretty nice, she thought, looking out over the ocean. Does this look pretty nice? Ah, I think that looks pretty glorious. You see that? What a wonderful place to live. The next spring, Miss Rumphius was not very well. Her back was bothering her again, and she had to stay in bed most of the time. The flowers she had planted the summer before had come up and bloomed in spite of the stony ground. She could see them from her bedroom window, blue and purple and rose-colored. Lupins, said Miss Rumphius with satisfaction. I have always loved lupins the best. I wish I could plant more seeds this summer so that I could have still more flowers next year. But she was not able to. You see her resting, 
resting in her bed, resting and resting with her sore back. Did you see the lupins peeking up through the window? Let's find out more about those lupins. After a hard winter, spring came. Miss Rumpheus was feeling much better. Now she could take walks again. One afternoon, she started to go up and over the hill where she had not been in a long time. I don't believe my eyes, she cried when she got to the top, for there on the other side of the hill was a large patch of blue and purple and rose-colored lupins. It was the wind, she said as she knelt in delight. It was the wind that brought the seeds from my garden here, and the birds must have helped. Then Miss Rumpheus had a wonderful idea. Here she is, discovering this wild patch of lupins. You see her house up here in the corner? Look at that. In the spring mist, kind of had some rainy, misty spring days for the past couple days, haven't we? She hurried home and got out her seed catalogs. She sent off to the very best seed house for five bushels of lupin seed. All that summer, Miss Rumpheus, her pockets full of seeds, wandered over fields and headlands, sowing lupins. She scattered seeds along the highways and down the country lanes. She flung handfuls of them around the schoolhouse and the back of the church. She tossed them into hollows and along stone walls. Her back didn't hurt her at all. Her back didn't hurt her any more at all. Now some people called her that crazy old lady. Here she is walking and walking. Is that crazy what she's doing? You see that? Walking and walking around her hometown. The next spring there were lupins everywhere. Fields and hillsides were covered with blue and purple and rose colored flowers. They bloomed along the highways and down the lanes. Bright patches lay around the schoolhouse and back of the church. Down in the hollows and along the stone walls grew the beautiful flowers. Miss Rumpheus had done the third, the most difficult thing of all. Look at all the flowers that she has planted. Oh, I got a peek to see if you can see. Can you see? All of the lupins. My great aunt Alice, Miss Rumpheus, is very old now. Her hair is very white. Every year there are more and more lupins. Now they call her the lupin lady. Sometimes my friends stand with me outside her gate, curious to see the old, old lady who planted the fields of lupins. When she invites us in, they come slowly. They think she is the oldest woman in the world. Often she tells us stories of faraway places. When I grow up, I tell her, I too will go to faraway places and come home to live by the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, says my aunt, but there is a third thing you must do. What is that? I ask. You must do something to make the world more beautiful. All right, I say. Here we all are. In her living room, listening to her stories, what do you notice? She has some of the shells that she collected. She's got paintings of some of the places that she's been. Look, she's even got a parrot, a pet parrot, maybe from her travels. So she says, do you remember? She says, you must do something to make the world more beautiful. All right, I say but I do not know yet what that can be. And here, the final landscape with all of her, with all of her lupins. And all of these children enjoying the beautiful flowers, the beautiful day, and the beautiful spring. All right. There we go. So that's Miss Rumpheus. And can you guess? We're going to do a project with 
using those lupins as our inspiration and idea. And all we need for this, hopefully you guys have these things at home. We need some kind of paper. If you have white paper, that works just great, especially if it's kind of a heavier, thicker paper. If you have watercolor paper, that's even more amazing because you'll get the best results, but it's okay. If you just have white paper, that's really good. I used, I decided to experiment. So I used a kind of really thin, almost translucent paper because you can see through. This is the back side of it, but you can see what I did on there, right? So I played with this paper, which is kind of like a plasticky paper, just to see what would happen. I even got some black paper out to see what would happen. Because what we're gonna do is use our paper and our trusty rusty crayons. Yeah, hopefully you guys have crayons. And our trusty rusty watercolors. Hopefully you guys have some watercolors. Yeah. And of course, if we're gonna do watercolors, then we need a jar of water and a paintbrush, right? So we're gonna do something called wax resist. And I really love this because it's a little bit sciencey as well as being super artistic. So water, water, I mean water, right? Water doesn't like to sit on top of wax. And you know what's made out of wax? These guys, crayons, right? So whatever I draw with my crayon and then try and paint over with my watercolors, right? The watercolors are gonna go on the paper, but they're not gonna stay on the waxy parts that I draw in. So I'm gonna show you my first example. So I drew a bunch of lupin shapes. Can you see this? They're really just little, I don't know, little teardrops, little ovals. You see that where I drew with pencil, with a, uh, sorry, with crayon. Well, I drew some bees too. All right. So I drew my lupin shapes, my flower shapes, and I just did like little circle, 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 circle going up, making this lupin plant. And then when I dip my brush into my water and got some paint, can you see how the paint went in to those areas that I outlined in the wax, but the paint doesn't really stay on the wax? I don't know if you can see that. And then these guys here, the leaves down here, I just painted those on with regular watercolors. And then I came back later and I added even more um, crayon. And I'll probably go back and fill this in some more. And of course, I had to include some honeybees because I love honeybees. They are amazing. They're so important to us, to our growing our crops, right? And the health of our environment. So yay, honeybees. I always got to include them. So what I did too for this one, this one I just drew a landscape of a house by the sea, just in crayon. And again, for the lupins, do you see, I just did circle, 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 going up in little steps. And for my path, I just did little lines of crayon, the house even. And the house actually has windows in it. And I don't know, can you see this even? I think I have to put the, can you see very, very, very subtle. I put some white crayon in there as cloud. So let's see what happens if I, get some watercolor on there and put it in the sky. So I'm gonna get some blue. And sorry guys, I don't have a document camera. So I can't really show you exactly what I'm doing in real time. So let's see if this works on this funny waxy paper that I found in my art studio, right? Cause isn't that part of the fun is just experimenting to see whatever you have. This is working. Let's see. So one thing I'm noticing as I'm putting this on here, I'll show you what I did on oh, my paper's curling. Can you see how the water is beating up 
over the waxy areas. See how it's beating up over the sun there? So I think maybe what I'm gonna do, take a little tiny piece of paper towel too, to help it along to kind of clear off those last little bits from the waxy area. Oh, looks like dabbing. Dabbing is the way to go. So I'm gonna dab my paint just a little bit to kind of spread it out over my paper. And look at this, look what happens. Do you see that? That's not great contrast. But I colored in some clouds with white crayon. Not too bad, it's too bad you guys can't see that very well. And the watercolor paint went around them but not on top of them. So let's do our house. What color should we make our house? Should we make our house, should we make it red? Should we make a little red house? Let's make a red house and see what happens. Get my watercolors on my brush. Try and paint my little house red. Boop, boop, boop. So if I wait just a second, look what happened to my house. Can you see it? Can you see how the water is beating up over the crayon wherever it was waxy? And I'm going to use this guy again. I'm going to dab, dab, dab. There we go. Now it's a kind of a subtly shaded house. All right. So this is called Wax Resist. And I love playing with watercolors anyway. So go ahead and make some kind of scene. You could do flowers. Um, you could do a landscape like this. You could do a flowers like this, right? You could do whatever you want. You could just do a seashore with kids flying kites. You could do a seashore with a sailboat out in the water. Um, you could do something that's springy, like spring in Iowa. What is spring in Iowa? What is something you could do? Could you do some daffodils? My daffodils are blooming right now. My crocuses were blooming last week. Um, did you notice that the trees are just starting to put out little leaves so you could do like tree branches and then little tiny green leaves and then watercolor all over the background to give it some kind of um some kind of background so like the sky or some grass or something like that anyway play around with that idea i'm gonna do one last thing really quick remember my dark paper i don't know what's gonna happen here but i drew some lupins just using my white crayon on black paper. And I don't know, this is part of the fun of art, right? It's just experimenting. I don't know what's gonna happen. If you're gonna be able to see these watercolors at all, if I put them down on this black paper, but I'm gonna give it a try. So I just got some bright purple on here and I'm gonna put some bright purple over my lupins. So I'm gonna use like a lot, a lot of paint on here because the paper is so dark and I wanna see if I can get anything to show up. I'll show you what I'm doing in just a second. All right. Okay, can you see this? It's pretty subtle and I, it's not, there we go. You can kind of see what I'm doing. Can you see that? See where it's all shiny? That's where I just put watercolor down. Okay, and I'm gonna grab a different color, like a lighter color. I have this kind of pinky color too. And I'm gonna put that on up here at the top. And I'm gonna to blend it a little bit into some of these and see if I can give them some depth and some shape with these different tones. And I'm gonna grab dark purple. And I'm gonna put that in there as well. Remember getting lots of stuff on my paintbrush because of my dark paper, I really want some pigment. Pigment, I can't talk. Put some pigment down. This, this looks like it's, it's kind of working. That's really cool. Isn't it fun to just try something new and see what happens? And would it be okay if this didn't turn out at all? 
it would be okay. And I'm curious to see what this is going to look like when it dries. Can you see that? See how shiny it is? Because it's wet. It's got watercolor all over it. It looks kind of like jewels or gems, doesn't it? So yeah, if you've got dark colored paper, use dark colored paper and a light colored crayon and see what you can do. And well, that watercolor is wet, you can even let the colors kind of mix and drip together and mingle. So there you go. There's some ideas, guys, for some art to explore this month. For April, April showers bring me flowers. Um, I hope you guys stay warm and well and that our rainy skies go away at some point so we can all go out and play in the spring sunshine. And uh, have a wonderful rest of your spring. I will see you in June. Take care, guys.